Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Today's tip is on how to effectively mask an object that's blurry. Uh, and generally this happens when a beauty shot has been taken with significant depth of field such as this one here. Uh, I personally work in the footwear industry and I run into this daily with beauty shots of shoes that have selective focus for a certain detail and then it gets more out of focus as the shot goes deeper. Um, so when clipping out an image such as this front apple here, we would just do a standard mask, uh, and I already drew one up here. Just throw a layer mask on it, white where you want it, black where you don't, and that's all fine and good. But what would you do if you wanted to clip out an object such as this? Uh, what I've found is to use this same approach. So I'm going to leave the mask. Um, we'll just make a different layer here. Delete the layer mask. We'll make a new one. Uh, to make a mask and aim for what I call the halfway point uh, with the blur. So here is entirely Apple. Like if we look at the photo, zoom in, all of this is Apple and then all of this is background. So somewhere between there is the halfway point. Uh, kind of like right here. So what you want to do is mask to the halfway point and then we're going to blur them together. So for this mask I will load up my black brush and I'm going to kind of aim for that halfway point. So trace around here. You'll notice I'm not getting 100% of the apple and I'm not getting 100% of the background. I'm just kind of getting a general shape of where this object is blurry. So once you have that, we'll call that good for me. I'm just going to use the magic wand here, expand my selection by say five, and then fill in the rest. Okay, so and then I'm going to invert it because we want the apple and not the other way around. So here we've got the front apple masked, no problem. Um, we'll start changing the background color here. So I've got the whole, the regular image here. I'm going to throw a hue and saturation change on it. We will make the background kind of this peachy color. So when it's masked like that, that's no big problem other than the obvious color cast of the apple is still yellow, but that's a different tutorial for a different day. Uh, but here the apple has got this weird sort of halo around it. So if you were to just take your layer mask, and I'm just going to merge these two layer masks together. So if you were to take your layer mask and just do something like feather it, that starts to solve the problem, but now your layer up here is all wonky because you've blurred it too much. So what you do is just select your layer mask, grab the blur tool, and then just kind of massage the edge until uh, the blur is sufficient to match whatever the current depth of field of the photo is. So as I'm going here, you can see that it's blurring out, but we still have kind of some significant haloing here of a new, the other color. So I'm just going to go into my brush, make my initial selection a little bit larger. Da -da 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 -da. One of the magic parts of blurring is that you don't have to be too terribly accurate. So we'll go like that. Grab my blur tool again and just kind of start working the edges. You can turn the strength up if you need to do it more. Uh, this particular photo is pretty blurry, so you're going to have to do it uh, considerably more than you might think you have to, but just zip around like that. And now if you look, you've got uh, kind of a compound layer mask here where one of it's in focus and the other one's blurring to the extent uh, that the photo is blurred. And you can hit Alt and click on your layer mask to get in there and kind of look at it in better detail. Uh, but by doing that, it allows you to have kind of a selective layer of focus so that as you tweak the colors, um, and I'm realizing this is probably a terrible image to explain this effect because all of the apples have bright yellow on them. But if you do it with something like a shoe or something that's photographed on white, 
you'll actually see that this really allows that edit to merge together. Um, and if you did have an instance like this one with a really massive color cast, you can always do select color range, grab that sort of yellowy color, maybe scrub in there with the yellowy color. You can see I'm getting some of that cast on the rim of the apples. Hit OK, and then maybe just throw in a different hue and saturation adjustment uh, to bring that edge into a similar color cast and then just really blur out your um, mask in a very general way like you would uh, with a regular one. And then that'll allow you to kind of deal with that rim lighting effect uh, that was happening on the apples. So that's the tip. Uh, I find it super helpful, again, when dealing with product photography because uh, depth of field is great and you really get kind of a sticker effect if you just deal with nothing but hard clipped images. Uh, so. Try to keep that in mind when dealing with anything that has been shot with a nice shallow focus. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you want more of these types of tutorials, feel free to subscribe or hop on over to my channel to watch more. As always, if you have questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.